Hi guys, it's Ben here. Welcome back to another video on this wonderful Saturday evening. The World Cup is two games in out of three today. South Korea have just lost to Mexico 2-1. Um, Belgium won 5-2 earlier against Tunisia. So two pretty good games there. I'm here to talk Liverpool transfers to start with because that's what I do best um, whilst the season isn't ongoing. Um, I'll do a bit of World Cup talking as well. Um, just because it's obviously a talk of uh, online at the moment. But yeah, let's get into the rumours um, that we've been blessed with over the last few days or the last 24 hours. Um, a bit of a mental one, Marco Asensio. I'm sure you've seen the reports. If not, then um, the reason you probably haven't seen them is because um, a lot of doubt has been cast over the uh, legitimacy of these reports. And don't be mad at me for mentioning it, mentioning it. I know a lot of you have been commenting recently saying that you're a bit sick of the transfer season and a silly season and um, just that you want people to sort of stop talking about it whilst the World Cup's going on. And look, transfers aren't at the forefront of my mind every single second of every day, but when the rumours come up, I'd like to just sort of come on here, talk about them, get your thoughts on them and maybe just kind of consider, you know, where each player that we're linked with would fit into Liverpool should they join. So let's t look at Marco Asensio. I mean, the, the season before last, um, was his real breakout year for Real Madrid. Like, well, um, was, was the year he really burst onto the scene. Um, last season, though, 19 starts, 13 uh, appearances off the bench in the league, six goals and six assists. So that's a very solid return. Um, he's in the Spain squad. He's not uh, a, a starter for Spain, guaranteed, um, but he's in there on the squad. Uh, this is a squad that a lot, a lot, a lot of good players didn't get into, so he's obviously good enough. Um, and and, and he is going to be a star. I mean, we, we, we all see he's got the ability. He's, oh, he's just such a good um, striker of a ball. He scores goals from distance, um, trickery, skills, panache, everything you want in a, in a forward player. Quite versatile as well, which fits the clock mould, which might um, influence the decision to run this story, which Mundo Deportivo uh, in Spain have done. Um, so they're saying Liverpool are ready to break the bank uh, for Real Madrid star Marco Asensio. Um, for a British, sorry, a British transfer record of 158 million pounds for the 22-year-old Spanish international, um, he he joined Real Madrid from Mallorca in 2014. Um, yeah, 50, 53 appearances in all competitions last season. So, you know, obviously Fakir is, as I keep mentioning every video, is still touch and go. So we're, we're going to naturally be linked to other players. People are being quite cynical about this one. 158 million pounds, obviously ludicrous. Um, I've seen somewhere else maybe 123 million pounds. Look, it's um, it's probably not true. Uh, well, at, at least that, at least that figure is probably not true. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he's looking to leave Madrid though. Um, not a guaranteed starter. Um, Madrid may well be looking to bring in another player in his position. Gareth Bale might be sticking around now that they've got a new manager. So it wouldn't be beyond the realm of possibility for Asensio to look to move on, um, even if it's just briefly. And yeah, he, he obviously would fit the mould at Liverpool. He, um, he's a talented attacking player, great age, great pedigree already, um, can play centrally. You know, he'd he slot perfectly in that, in that attacking midfield role, or off the left, or maybe even off the right. Um, yeah, obviously we all love the player. I'm gonna not spend too long talking about it because yeah, the chances are it's not true. But what do you think? Do you think he would be a, a great, even a, a better alternative uh, than Nabil Fakir? Let me know. So before I get into the rest of the rumours and the World Cup, I'm going to tell you quickly about this app called Betball. Uh, they've reached out to me and have kindly sponsored this video. This is an app that I've used before. It's another one of these kind of fun social betting apps, so it's not your standard, you know, boring spreadsheet looking app. So the good thing about this app, there's loads of tips on there. So if you're not a good better yourself, then you can just literally follow all the top tips. So you've got the top yielders there, which means um, people that have uh, sort of won the most money compared to what they're sticking down. Um, so you can kind of check out all their profiles, see what bets they're placing and just follow them. You can just kind of scroll through, see what bets are kind of trending at the moment and see if there's any that you fancy. So I'm going to go into the Acker Lab, um, which is going to come up with some suggestions for bets for me. So again, all doing the work for me if I don't think, <laughs> if I don't fancy my own predictions. And it's kind of like Tinder, you can just swipe left if you don't fancy these. I'm not going to go for one of these, but it's a great little feature. I'm just going to look at the World Cup. So let's put together a little accumulator for the World Cup games coming up. So a little threefold here. England to score exactly three goals against Panama. I think that that's about par. Denmark to beat France. Um, I think Denmark looked pretty solid, and France I'm not convinced by yet. So yeah, and then Brazil to beat Serbia. That's 23 to one. So I've, I've had it boosted slightly already because um, I've used this app quite a lot. So two quid on that can win me 48 pounds 61. Let's place the bet. 
and it's going to print a lovely little screen for me. Now, I'm going to spin the wheel here, and, and this is going to give me either an extra boost, or it's going to give me uh, insurance on my bet. So, the wheel is spinning now, what are we going to get? We can get a 5% boost, up, up to a 30% boost. Uh, it's going to be a 5% boost, so not what we were looking for, but a 5% boost, that's probably the worst one you can get, and you're going to get that every time you spin the wheel. You're going to get either that uh, or an insurance, which means if one leg of your bet loses, then you, you still get your money back as a free bet, which is great. So I'm going to claim that, and that boosts my return is 51 quid. The link to this app is in the description. Obviously, I'm not encouraging gambling uh, for those that don't already do it, but if you do do it and you fancy a little punt, then do use BetBall. Um, great fun with the, with the spinning the wheel and getting the boost. It just looks great. Um, and obviously, you can look at bets that other people are putting on, things you might not know too well. Definitely recommend it. Back to the video. So obviously another one of the key things that we'll have to address this summer is the goalkeeper situation. And James Pearce has written about Liverpool's uh, supposed interest uh, in Nick Pope and Thomas Strakosha from Lazio. He's basically saying that Liverpool aren't even considering either of those keepers. So we're not in for Pope or Strakosha. Alisson is looking unlikely. All Black's going to be a stretch too far. So at the moment it looks like it could be absolutely anybody. Um, in, in the sort of the tier below your Allisons and Old Blacks maybe, it's probably where we're shopping now, um, given that I don't really know who else is available. Uh, maybe if someone else, another big club signs Allison or Old Black, then we might look to take her over there, replacing um, there. Honestly, it's so wide open. The World Cup's on at the moment, so we're probably not even gonna know for a good few weeks. Nabil Fakir, it wouldn't be a transfer video without me talking about Nabil Fakir. The latest is that Leon have seemingly named the new price tag, which is a bizarre thing to do, given everyone pretty much knows about the medical issues, uh, but they've done it anyway. Um, so apparently now they're looking for upwards of 60 million. So yeah, 70 million euros, says Ala. He's still not ruling out the Liverpool move. Uh, let's get some actual quotes. He goes, nothing is ever completely over in the footballing world. Personally, I'm no longer in discussions with Liverpool. At the moment, we are waiting for France and Nabil to have a fantastic World Cup. If Nabil was to start in the World Cup final, I'm thinking about Nabil, about his future, about his family, because I especially like his dad and the entire environment. I think Nabil's career is going to be greater if he stays at Lyon, but it won't be me who decides. So it's just blah, 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 blah at the moment. Um, I wouldn't be panicking either way. <sighs> who knows? Nabil Fakir. Who who knows? Um, I, I'm still leaning towards it not happening, but maybe more towards it happening now because just 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 some hints. But um, I've gone a 55-45 in terms of no, but literally it's so close. Leave a comment whether you think he will come. Let's touch on the World Cup just to finish off here. Switzerland last night beat Serbia. Jordan Shakiri, who we're still linked with, but apparently have called interest according to Sky the other day, um, scored a wonderful winning goal. Um, so that's going to do him no harm whatsoever. England are playing tomorrow against Panama. Uh, Jordan Henderson, who played really well, is expected to start there. Um, Trent Alexander-Arnold waiting in the wings, uh, but Trippier played really well against Tunisia, so I'm not expecting Trent to be getting many minutes uh, at the moment. Um, if England win that, then they're through, and yeah, it's just a case of who they play in the next round. Colombia didn't look great. Um, it could well be Senegal. You know, Senegal got a win over Poland. If they win the group and we come second, who knows, that, that could be interesting with Sadio Mane. Um, other than that, Bobby Firmino came on and inspired Brazil's win uh, yesterday over Costa Rica. I thought he did really well when he came on, won that header for Coutinho's goal. And Coutinho, by the way, I think has been superb. His, his goal in the first game was obviously world class and just the way he was the one that came up trumps uh, in that second game when it mattered most. Fair, fair play to him, all credit to him. I still have so much time for that guy as a footballer and I'm enjoying watching him in this World Cup. And I'm enjoying the World Cup on the whole. It's not been the best I've ever seen, but we've had no nil nils and plenty of controversy. Um, some surprises, Argentina obviously uh, flopping at the moment, but I still think they're gonna go through. Um, lots to talk about, excited to watch Germany in 20 minutes time. Let's see what happens over the next few days, both on the Liverpool front, two weeks until pre-season starts, and on the World Cup front, um, I'm still tipping Brazil. I've still got a slight feeling they're going to go all the way. Leave a comment with who you think is going to win the World Cup. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. Thanks for watching. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat and Facebook. And I'll see you next time.